Well, welcome one and all to Bike Racing Without Mercy. I'm with Adam here in the Oxford Laboratory, the Sports Science Physiology Laboratory, going to want to take another test. Now, last time around, you may remember, we did that VO2 max ramp and then a 30 minute ramp in order to really hone in on my anaerobic threshold, my VT2. The VO2 max ramp gave us a good ballpark and then that 30 minute ramp in and around my threshold, my expected threshold, allowed us to really dial in that number at around 265 to 270 watts, i.e. the number I can ride for about 30 to 40 minutes. However, what we didn't do was hone in on my aerobic threshold, my VT1. So today we're going to undertake one test plus a little bolt-on to the test in order to calculate an accurate aerobic threshold. Adam, really good to see you. Good to see you again, Phil. Thanks for, uh, thanks for coming back for some more fun. This is going to provide greater resolution around the, the VT1 threshold. So we, we established a ballpark figure of it being about 220 potentially from the, the VO2 max test previously. Um, the issue there is there's not one test to rule them all through setting up the VO2 max test to actually establish a good number for VO2 max. We potentially sacrifice some of the resolution on determining this this VT1 threshold, kind of both metabolically and in terms of the power. So whereas before we were using quite steep ramp rates, we're jumping 25 watts every three minutes, um, we're now going to only be jumping by 15 watts every eight minutes, and we're going to narrow in down on where we expect this range to be. So I'm going to be starting fill off at 180 watts, and then yeah, we'll be jumping up 15 watts every eight minutes, and this eight minute time frame will allow his his blood lactate to really hit a hit a, a steady state so we can be sure that what I'm then looking at metabolically both with the the expired gas uh, so it's going to be wearing the mask again so with the um, the gas sampling and also looking at his blood lactate is this is actually going to kind of truly represent this power level and this is slightly confusingly when we're measuring it with lactates this is actually the lactate threshold so everyone thinks of lactate threshold being there their anaerobic threshold, their FTP, but in physiological terms, this is actually the lactate threshold. That threshold, the higher one, is actually the lactate turn point. What we're looking at here is effectively the, the threshold between zone two and zone three. The issue is if you set this off a percentage of FTP, whilst on a, pop again, this comes back to kind of on population levels, it's probably a, maybe about correct. It's kind of tends to be about 65% um, of FTP, or it varies person to person whereas here um, we're actually going to get it down to doing it specifically for Phil's actual physiology so we'll actually be able to set that threshold based on what's happening metabolically and physiologically rather than just doing it as an arbitrary percentage an arbitrary but informed but still arbitrary percentage of of a performance test that's not being determined by this threshold where this lactate threshold sits as a proportion of your VO2 max as a proportion of your critical power varies person to person a lot and that's determined by your genetics which would then be the, the different fiber types you have in your legs how well trained you are what type of training you've been doing if you've been doing a lot of yeah zone two base mile training you'd expect this threshold to increase whereas if you've been doing a lot of kind of threshold training or v2 max training then it might sit proportionally a lower amount so whereas yeah the, the classic kind of um, zone setting method you're just taking a percentage off here we're actually going to set it what this threshold is looking at physiologically is effectively it's the the power at which you'll get you're starting to get an actual kind of tangible onset of elevated lactate in the in your bloodstream and it's the point where the muscles can no longer buffer the lactate and some has to be cleared yeah exactly. through uh, the blood it's the point at which yeah the basically the the muscles starting to get slightly overwhelmed and you start to get a, a tangible amount of anaerobic glycolysis going on you're getting a buildup of lactate in the in the cytosol of the muscle so in the muscle cells and cells and it starts getting transported out into the blood as phil said and this is the point right this is a threshold a physiological threshold this isn't just calculating a zone of training it's a threshold above which we don't want to go if we're targeting endurance if we're targeting a desire to use as much fat as possible uh, to fuel the ride if we're trying to preserve carbohydrate and it's a threshold as fast as we can go in terms of the power hopefully um, where we can do exactly that shall we get on with the test then yeah 180 watts yeah so th this would be um this would be quite interesting to everyone so 180 watts pretty easy, pretty easy effort but as you can see this is a live readout of this figure here is the grams of carbohydrate per hour the feels burning. This is quite an accurate estimate because this is actually based on basically the ratio of carbon dioxide he's producing to oxygen he's using, and you can quite accurately actually estimate from that 
what what fuels he's burning because uh, they they have differing profiles in terms of the relationships between those two um, as you can see here so this is at 180 watts this is you know very much all day power it's jumping up and down a little bit just as it feels breathing rate changes and things like that but you can see that is the rate of carbohydrate he's burning through it's it's well over 100 grams per per hour it's above this above basically the rate at which you can you can feed yourself at carbohydrate in terms of carbohydrate provision per hour you know the maximum amount you can probably take on is 90 to maybe 100 grams you've got a very well trained gut and you can handle it he's basically he's in a net deficit for for carbohydrates so you do this for long enough or you you know you ride it up higher than 180 watts which is you know what most people would potentially be looking to do if they're pretty well trained for for century rides and things like this and you know, you're really burning into your your glycogen stores because your body needs to it needs to be using this carbohydrate it doesn't want to use fats fats less efficient in terms of oxygen use so adam for the start of bianchi i averaged about 180 185 watts for the five and a half hours or so why is this 180 watts then not my aerobic threshold whilst you're still burning carbohydrate and oxygen is starting to become a kind of a limiting factor to the exercise you're still very much predominantly working aerobically. So your body wants to use this carbohydrate because it's more efficient in terms of ATP molecules um, generated or regenerated per oxygen molecules used, but you're still operating aerobically mm -hmm. and therefore this is still below, yeah, below this aerobic threshold. Your body is still not really having to dip into anaerobic methods which are less efficient still but don't use any oxygen but you're still burning through this carbohydrate you're just doing so in a in an oxidative manner okay. in a, an aerobic manner so this is why you can you can sit below your threshold and still be burning through a lot of a lot of carbohydrate your your the rate of carbohydrate that you can use from stuff that you feed yourself is actually determined the limiting factor is the ability of your of your gut so of your your small intestines to actually uptake the carbohydrate it's not anything to do with the the capacity to metabolize it and to burn it so that's why you can kind of have yeah. this this discrepancy where you can actually be burning a huge amount of carbohydrate and these carbohydrate intake rates are consistent for um actually pretty consistent across body size and across training status so you could be a, a super lightweight 50 kilo climber and actually your ability to feed yourself a carbohydrate in terms of grams per hour it's going to be pretty much the same as a 100 kilo track sprinter which uh, kind of discriminates against us of a, a larger disposition it does it does mean that as you get fitter and you're you know you're sitting your your thresholds are at higher watts watts is just a you know a unit of energy per unit time so joule per second you're you'll actually be burning through more energy even yeah, as you know, a bigger rider yeah and or just as a more powerful rider and that's why the the pros are just constantly eating because they've got to maximize it if you watch any of them the peloton they're always taking on gels they're always eating they're drinking their cans of coke or something so just trying to get carbohydrate in as, as much as possible because even if they're sat below their aerobic threshold you know they're sat in a bunch and they're not actually putting out that many that many relative watts to their capacity their absolute watts are quite high therefore they're burning through a higher number of joules per hour and that you know that's an energy currency that's got to be repaid with primarily carbohydrate and you need to fuel as much as possible to mitigate against that but also be aware of the fact that even if you're not going tremendously hard you're still probably going to be in a bit of a, a carbohydrate deficit so we're at 210 watts at the moment um getting to the last the last minute of this step so i'm just going to check where it fills out with this lactate so uh, his baseline was 1.2 millimolar so this is a bit of a misconception some people have that there's no lactate in your system when you're at rest or you're working easily actually it's often kind of 0.8 to 1.2 something like that and very broadly what we're looking for here to define the, the lactate threshold is an increase of one millimolar over this baseline level so that's why we found 1.4 1.5 so that suggests that for the previous steps he hasn't been over let's see whether he's uh chopped over that uh, that threshold yet or not and hopefully see uh it's still at 1.4 so this was taken right at the end of the uh the 210 step hopefully it means that's truly representative of that power level that's given his body time to respond to the work demands and kind of get itself back to a steady state and yeah he looks like he's still below that take threshold so um on we go so this is a consistent 225 watts policed by egg mode on a bike calibrated to 0.5 percent accuracy as good as it gets the one who bolt is tracking the power from my own acionas and it's consistently tracking 
eight to ten marks below. And that's, and that's interesting for me when I'm riding outside I need to translate the power thresholds from the lab bike to my own bike. What's he saying, huh? So, just done the one for 225, and actually it's still at 1.3. So it's basically still, in terms of what's actually circulating into the system, same as the um, sort of baseline. So whilst there probably will be more lactate being produced in his muscle fibers, in his legs, in his quadriceps, and in his glutes, that's actually that's being broken down locally and it's not really building up sufficiently to work its way into the bloodstream. So we're still still below lactate threshold, so um, we've now jumped up to 240 watts. So it fills now up at 2.3 millimolars of lactate. So basically that indicates that he's now above his lactate threshold by the uh, the criteria that I kind of set before we started, which was going to be one millimolar above threshold. So he's he jumped up above it now. So um, this is the last the last step of the. Uh, the test is now jumping up to what we were, we were going to call it, we bolted on the end, which is a, uh, a 275 watt effort, so basically a threshold effort, and we're just going to look at um, basically how many grams per hour of carbohydrate he's burning through at thresholds. Give you guys a, an idea of if you're actually going to be doing, you know, a substantial amount of time in zone four, actually what kind of fueling strategies you're going to have to use, and I think most people will be, uh, will be surprised by quite how much carbohydrate they're burning through. It's at 275 watts at the moment. So um, yes, as mentioned, we've put this on the end of this uh, submax test. We put him up to threshold now. Why we've done this is basically to show basically the carbohydrate oxidation rate that he's gonna be sat at when he's doing intervals at threshold, or even just on a, on a regular ride where you, know, you hit a climb and you're probably gonna do that up towards zone, zone four, maybe even above. You know, you can, you can end up building up quite a, a considerable amount of time sat in that power zone. And I think a lot of people will be surprised by quite how much um, carbohydrate burning through. So you see he's, he's shifted fully to, to carbohydrate oxidation here. He's not burning any fat at all. So basically his body's, his body's realized it's gonna to have to utilize just carbohydrate because that's more, as I mentioned, it's more efficient in terms of oxygen handling. Um, fat's much more abundant and it's more energy dense itself, but it's actually in terms of when oxygen becomes the, uh, the limiting factor and push comes to shove, your body uh, jumps up to carbohydrate. And you see here he's, he's cracking through, well, over 200, um, 200 grams per, per hour of carbohydrates. This is, you know, a substantial amount, more than double the amount that he could feed himself. So even if he's only spending half of the, half of the time during a ride at this, um, at this intensity and the rest of it's at very, very low intensities, you're still basically over the maximum amount of, of intake you can, actually, you can actually achieve. So that we, um, yeah, we chatted about this before and we thought this would be a really nice way of just, um, just showing quite how much carbohydrate you burn through if you're a, you know, a, a well-trained cyclist such as Phil and you're sat at 275 watts. So imagine you're Filippo Ganna and you can sit at 400 watts for you know, an hour or something like that. Imagine what he's burning through. Bearing in mind, actually, he's, even if he you know, trains his system to be able to uptake maybe a little bit more carbohydrate, he drinks very kind of high, uh, high percentage carb drinks and takes on lots of gels and basically makes it, makes it so he can do it without, without occurring stomach upset basically um even then he's gonna be cracking through huge amounts of of carbohydrate you know not not quite double this but maybe up you know north of 300 grams an hour and really he's you know even if he can do massive carb loads and things like that he's, you know really risking breaking down this glycogen really quite quickly it's actually one where the, the the stronger you get and the bigger you are you're actually a bit disadvantaged when it comes to to carbohydrate um fueling and the uh much more important it becomes to have a really nailed on um, nutritional plan both for trailing and for racing and especially if you're doing you know things like the the strider ride that um phil did where there'll be there's climbs where you're going to do those at kind of threshold you, you know you, you really need to make sure that you you eat you eat a lot and you start early because uh as soon as you start feeling like you're a bit depleted that's too late the uh the levels are too low and you've not really got the capacity to eat more than you're burning so you can never really uh as long as you're still riding and you're not riding at kind of you know lower zone one or anything like that, you're probably not gonna be able to actually uh build those glycogen stores back up at all so you're uh you're on a, a slow path to to their excruciating bonky death unfortunately but um science old school science look at this completely illegible science hieroglyphics that is <laughs>
Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> are there any preliminary results here that are kind of interesting, Adam? Yeah, so it certainly looks like Phil's lactate threshold sits somewhere between 225 and 240 watts. So basically, for all of these power ranges, so for 180, 195, 210, and remember he was sat at these powers for eight minutes, so we're pretty confident that the, the lactate that was in his system at the end of each of those steps represents is a fair representation of metabolically what's happening at those steps. Um, basically, hadn't jumped above hand jumped above baseline basically so everything was his, his legs were managing to to handle the load themselves um, and then as we got jumped to 240 then we're above and we've gone above this um, one millimolar basically one unit of concentration of lactate above baseline um, so the baseline 1.2 and you're saying the lt1 or the aerobic threshold is calculated when you get one millimole above that 1.2, yeah, so 2.2. So 2.2 2. 2 .2 and above, yeah. And that was the, the kind of, and as I alluded to, there's, there's so many different ways of calculating lactate threshold. Mm -hmm. um, the, um, so here we are, 2.3 at the 2.40. Yeah. So, so I'm somewhere between the 2.25 and 2.40, and we calculated yeah. off that three minute ramp for the VO2 max, 2.29. So yeah. um, definitely that's the ballpark. And really, you know, I think that's the point, right? It's a threshold one for me to be aware of. And the moment I'm going above that 225 watts, I kind of know that I'm playing with fire a little bit in terms of eating in to, mo to a little bit more carbohydrate uh, than fat than I'd ideally want for an endurance ride. Yeah, and I mean, this is, it's not, um, you're not gonna feel the effects quite as acutely as you would if you were sat five watts over anaerobic threshold, because then you're, you're literally just like on the way to exhaustion. But, um, but yeah, if you, if, if you consistently were sat 10, 15 watts too high into the, over this threshold, you're you know, just burning through, you're just increasing that rate of glycolysis a bit more than you're, you really want to be doing for that, for that kind of effort, for that kind of either prescribed training or for being able to complete a very long ride with a nice kind of consistent power profile. You don't want to be horribly positive splitting it and, uh, you know, going off at 300 watts and finishing at 150, you know, groveling. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, so this is where this really has- We all have rides like that. <laughs> So tell us a bit about the carbohydrate utilisation. So obviously when we're at 180 watts, the 1.4 minimal, so comfortably um, dealing with the lactate in the muscle, I was still using a reasonable amount of carbohydrate, about 100 grams an hour. Yeah, so um, if I can open up the path. So even, yeah, even when he was sat at 180, 180 watts, so the, the green here is the, uh, the power. But you can see it's well above 100 grams oh. per hour of carbohydrate, 180 watts, which, mo you know, for, um, something like Phil, you know, you probably wouldn't even think too much. But it does surprise me because I can ride for a good three hours, you know, without yeah. eating anything, no problem at all. And that was and that would suggest one that um, you probably you probably through repeatedly kind of building up your glycogen stores and breaking them down, building up, breaking down as you would do with that sort of ride. You probably um, kind of driven adaptations to kind of greater concentrations of glycogen in your muscles, so your body's better able to lay down these glycogen stores. So you've got you've got a bigger tank to start with. Pills LT1 sits somewhere between 225 and 240 watts. So if we look at around that range for the for the, the, the data collection is 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 sitting around 200. Basically, yeah, so he's, he's cracking through 200 grams per hour of carbohydrate. So let's say he's got 400 to play with. You've only actually got about, if you don't eat anything. Um, and I've got 400 to play with because the body can store five to 600 across the brain, the liver, and the muscles and there but you only ever deplete maybe half of it or 60 percent well of it. yeah and that's why you've got only sort of yeah so three, 400 to play with yeah so your body will start um start emptying out the liver stores as you're kind of as the the muscle the muscle levels start to drop off to kind of keep those provision that's why you get um kind of consistent uh elevation of glucose into your bloodstream as you're as you're exercising but once those are gone you're then all you've got left is the muscle stores and you know yeah if you're a well-trained cyclist you've probably got adaptations you've got increased enzyme activity that means you you can lay down slightly greater amounts of glycogen but yeah you're still you're still on borrowed time and yeah so if you were if you're doing sitting at at this threshold. So you're on borrowed time unless you're eating a lot and you yeah. can't eat enough to replace yeah, so basically, 200. Yeah you're not yeah you're not going to if you try to eat 200 um, grams worth of um, carbohydrate while cycling you you're going to end up with a very upset stomach the uh, the takeaway message here is if you want to if you want to keep your training intensity up and you want to go for as long as possible you've got to eat a lot you've got to eat basically as much as you can tolerate without feeling unwell and you've got to you've got to eat early as well because you're, you're 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 burning this carbohydrate right out the gate and so big takeaways for me are um one 
For these big endurance rides, these sportives, the Grand Fondos, etc., probably err to a little bit of caution as to where you think your aerobic threshold, your LT1 lies. I, you may think the top end of your zone two is good to go, but be honest with yourself, you know, trust what Adam's saying. Plus, big takeaway for me, I need to eat a lot more on the bike. I do think I am trying to get around about 80 grams of carbs an hour. I'll see if I can push that up a little bit towards 100 because clearly that's the other big factor that I think, you know, me included, but many of us are probably still neglecting a little bit. Yeah, and that's not to say every single ride go out and be, you know, <laughs> knocking back a gel every 10 minutes because there are, there are- I can fit them in my pocket. Yeah, there's beneficial adaptations to, to being in a lower glycogen state. That's why people do fasted riding and things like that. No, that's mm. another, that's a topic for another video perhaps, but um, the, Yes, yeah, so it's not to say I'll oh, absolutely smash it, but it's very much worth looking to this concept of training your gut as well. Um, basically, progressively in, uh, incrementally increasing the amount of carbohydrate you're taking on for rides, be it in, you know, with carb drinks or with gels or with whole mm. foods, usually a mixture of those is the best strategy to, to make it so you can comfortably take on those amounts. And then when you do do your big event, then you do have the, you have the capacity to comfortably absolutely maximize your, your carbohydrate uptake capacity and therefore basically spare this glycogen as much as you can even though realistically if you're going even like kind of slightly hard you're still gonna be burning through it yeah. but you can you can keep it top you know you can you can take out that bottom end of the real the real rapid depletion basically perfect well adam as ever thank you ever so much for massively insightful uh, morning here at Oxford University. Hugely appreciate your time, your expertise, I mean your knowledge and your science. Don't forget the science. <laughs> but thank you ever so much. Really appreciate it. And I look forward to coming back and, you know, conjuring up another little test or two because I, I this, for me, this for me is an exploration, a journey and this is a really, really intriguing part of the journey. Oh yeah, I mean, the, the possibilities are endless. That's why I love doing this stuff. You know, my, my PhD is looking at exercise physiology and um, yeah, whatever you wanna, whatever you wanna do next, uh, let's get it in the diary. Awesome, take cool. care. Great, have a good one.